the next stage of the anatomy of the suit is the trousers. And rather like when we first started to draft the trousers, we'll start with the top of the waistband. This here we have uh, is the dress trousers that went with the velvet jacket with the short collar that we did early on. The top of the waistband seam is one how we first started the draft on the trousers, and the crease, which is the center line, is the second point we covered. Then we did the inside leg. So now the inside leg is really the distance from the inside to the length of the trousers. So if I pull that out this way, this, as you can see, is a worn pair of trousers. We've got that's the inside leg of the trousers. From the fork to the bottom, that's the inside leg of the trousers. This is our classic step down heel. Sometimes we do our step down heel with a, a straight line. And there are on occasions when I make a delta line style, I actually do a step down on an angle like this, which you will see in a moment. So we've got the waistband seam. Now we've got the fly. We've got the front fly. We've got the left fly. And this is a double extension band, by the way, so it has a, a mirrored finish on both sides. It gives the effect of the extension band extending on both sides. This is, I've put a, a wider waistband on this with the same silk as on the shawl collar of the velvet jacket as to make like a comma bond. The left fly, this is your left fly. Left fly catch, we say, and this is a right fly catch. Of course, you know the zip. This is called a bearer. This extension, approximately 10 centimeters, is called a bearer. And the reason why it's called a bearer is that when the trousers are being worn, you must always recommend that you button up the bearer first and then you pull the zip up. And that eases all the strain on the zip. The zip will pull up very freely. Now, we've got your waistband, your side seam, inside leg, you've got the crease, um, you've got the fly. Now we're going to just move back to the side. Here, this is being a dress trousers. Dress trousers is a term we describe for a dinner jacket or a dinner suit trousers. It's a single braid. If it's a dress tails, it'll be a double braid. This is a side strap. This is very much a style feature, and we'll be showing you different styles that you can do. You know, belt loops, duck tops, and different styles of strap. This, the shape of it doesn't really matter. What really matters is this area, the area that has the buckle where the straps are tied onto. The shape here doesn't matter. This is, you know, I tend to do different shapes, I, but uh, just on, only because I'm being a little bit creative here. Now we've got the inside. If there are hip pockets, by the way, then the hip pockets will go along there, which is just a horizontal version of the vertical side pockets here. This is a single jetted side pocket. We've got double breast, double jetted, and when I do a double jetted pocket, I tend to do a double double loops as well, because I like the continuity of the style. The hip pocket can go there with a single jet or a double jet. Inside, you've got the curtain. This extension here that we have below the waistband is called a curtain. And the objective of the curtain really, if we did have hip pockets, is to cover the, the seams on the hip pocket, but it's the main purpose, purpose is to cover the inlay that you have on top of the waistband that goes in. This is approximately seven to eight centimeters wide. We turn the trousers inside, and this is very important when at the very beginning of, of the trouser making process. Let me turn it around this way so you can see the inside clearly. We've got lining. It's standard and bespoke for us to have lining at the front. But what I meant when I say it's important that the, it's absolutely imperative that your lining is not tight at the front of your trousers. You should have it at, at least the same width as the, the cloth on the outside or fraction looser, but certainly not tight. 
we've done use of pinking shears here because we like to keep this edge thin so that when the trousers is being pressed we wouldn't get a line going across on the outside. The purpose of actually using a pinking shears is to prevent the raveling. Now if you did cut it in a perfectly straight yarn you can actually take out a few uh, strands of yarn and that'll be just as well. Here you'll see a little extension on the fly. The fly lining here comes along and we've got a little extension on that fly lining so that we can cover up the works of the, all the seams coming together because you've got the inside leg seams and you've got the closing seam which is the seat seam coming together. When all of that comes together you've got the, the bulk on the inside and it's, uh, it, it doesn't look very neat. So we cover that up. You can actually have an extension of your right fly lining or it can be done with a separate piece of cloth. It can even be done with a fancy lining if you choose to do that. But uh, that's pretty, pretty standard. We have the curtain at the back and here we've got the curtain at the front. And again, the curtain is designed to cover the inlay that you have at the top of the band. The pocket bag, this is done by hand. This is an ultra bespoke trousers. So the, the stitches are matching. It can hardly be seen. But here you get the prick stitches that you'll be doing on the ultra bespoke hose. And here, simply when the, the waistband is sewn, we leave a gap that creates the opening to accommodate the button. On the inside, simply turn in the cilicia and fill it down. Now this is the pleated front trousers. The pleat is folded over the top and then it naturally follows down and finishes off as a crease. The side pleat that we have here is folded over and finishes off just to more or less in line with the bottom of the pocket. Just below the seat line it actually finishes off. So you've got your pleats, you've got your waistband, you've got a double extension band, which is simply a separate piece of cloth. You see there's an opening here. And you've got your side straps, side pockets, and so on. So if we turn that around that way, it's quite a firm cloth. This is a mohair cloth, slight sheen. Next, we'll go on to the dark tops. The dark top trousers is simply an opening in the waistband, which we'll be doing on trouser making. And you've got an extension with a buttonhole. And we tend to have three buttons. For adjustment. This got elasticated on the inside so we can draw this in and button onto the second button. If your customer's lost a bit of weight it should still be functional and if he's lost quite a lot of weight then you've got an option for a third button. And that's quite a lot there. But the first button is really to finish off the DAX. That's pretty straightforward. That's a different style and slightly different shape on, on the inside bearer, but serving the same purpose. Narrower band, one hook, and extension band. Now we go on to a side strap of slightly different shape. Just to make the point, I've got these trousers to reduce. The customers already had it, but here we've got a double jetted slant pocket. A double jetted slant pocket. We've got what we, I call a pistol strap. It's just only because I've shaped the strap with a, a trigger here and a handle of a pistol. And this here is the extension of the barrel of the pistol. So that's what it's intended to emulate. So that's just a slightly different finish with the strap actually on the waistband. What you've seen before is the strap on the seam of the band, that's because we had a much wider band. The trousers are worn higher. This year we've got a plain bottoms with a very slight angle, with the heel just a little longer than the instep. Now we move on to a slightly different style, which is a tunnel loop. We've got tunnel loops, meaning that the loops are wider 
than the conventional one centimeter wide. It's rather like a tunnel to fit about in. And here we've got a hip pocket. We've got a double jetted side pocket. We've got a double jetted hip pocket and a bit of fun with a, a contrast blue stitch and a roll tack. This is a roll tack which you learn to do. You learn to do the quick stitch already. And what we have in addition to these trousers, we have the step down heel with turn ups. Now, the process of actually doing the step down heel with turn ups is exactly the same as the trousers that is straight with turn ups. But we'll go through the process a little bit later on. And here you've got what is called a raised side seam. So that seam is not open, rather, like you have the inside leg seam is open, it's flat. This is raised, meaning that the seam is pushed to one direction and you've got a slight different, a slight, slightly raised uh, edge. So if you turn the trousers inside out, you'll be able to see the raised seam. And then most of the stitches visible on the inside, whereas on the outside, you're seeing the consistency of the brick stitch. Very neat. What I'm showing you the anatomy of the trousers, but I'm also showing you different styles. And the idea here is to, is to show you just what can be achieved as you continue on, on this journey. This is a typical V, as you'd find on brace trousers. And often you'll get a button on the outside, or you'll have buttons on the inside. My choice here is not to have any buttons, because this is not made to be worn with braces, but is made to be uh, to look as a style feature. In addition to that, at the front, instead of the conventional extension band, we've got a tab, a tab to finish. But what you will see on these trousers is that there is no actual separate waistband. It's all one piece. And this is called a whole top trousers. It means the top of the trousers whole is a complete piece that extend to the, the length of the trousers. So this is a whole top. That's a whole top brace trousers. That crease you're seeing there is not a seam, but that crease there is because the trousers have been worn and that crease came up. But it's not, it's, there's not, no waistband there. And that's your whole top brace trousers. You will see on this. This is this the suit actually is a delta line. And so what we've done on these trousers is our standard step down heel with slight angle as opposed to it being straight. Now I take a great deal of pride in doing handwork. So you would see uh, and contrast work, and you'll see that I've contrasted a prick stitch on the dart, the double jetted pocket with the tab, the tab here with a roll tack on either side to accommodate the button. A double loop in this case, and this is what I like doing, is a double belt loops to mirror the image of the double jetted pocket. Same again here with the Biera, around. Doesn't matter whether it's round, whether it's a sharp line. The objective is that you've got the button holder that takes the string of the button and eases the strain in pulling the zip up. And again, a step down heel on an angle. This is my preferred choice rather than having it straight. I would have described the back seam sometimes as the closing seam. So this is actually when we describe the word closing, that's the closing seam because it's the last seam that you actually sew in the trousers to close the two legs together. But it's often described as the seat seam or the back seam. And so and so there you have it flat fronted loop double jetted pocket raised side seams hip pocket right tab and button